Jeff Scott of Black Hawk Technical College retaping or taping the Chapter 2 presentation for 152-142 uh, Intro to .NET Programming. I just did the Chapter 1. I will hopefully produce it sometime this morning and get it out there along with this one, along with the two for Java that I still have to do. So I'm now on page 53 of the book, Getting Started with Forms and Controls. And the sound is still a little funky on here, so if it does sound a little tinny, or the bass or whatever sounds wrong, I'm going to try to fix that in a bit. Okay. So as it says, the first step is creating the application's GUI, use the designer, and technically again, that's not the first step. The first step is to figure out what the problem is doing. The second step is to, to design your interface without using a GUI. The third is to develop your logic. Then you come in there and you write your code and you do all this stuff. Okay. Now, I'm going to go back and show you a lot of the stuff that's in here that I some of which I've already talked about but that's okay that's not a big thing one way or the other I'd rather do that and duplicate a few things than not go over something that you or I may consider to be important so I'm going to bounce back and forth I'm going to again start up another session of Visual Studio I'll keep that one up right but I had this this Jeff's XYZ project I'm going to do a file close solution Okay, I really don't need that project anymore, and I wanted to show you something with that, too. Notice that if I take the project and remove it, I just drag it over to the recycle bin. Okay, now if I start up another session of Visual Studio here, because I've done this before, if I click here now, I get an error message. All right? It says, do I want to remove the reference? Yes, be really, because I re it, 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 now it's not there anymore. Why did I do that? Because I've taken the project and thrown it away. So, new project, Windows Form app, and let's just call this Chapter 02 Demo. Okay, I don't like to put any blank spaces in here, and I don't think you should either. So, Chapter 2 Demo, and click OK. And, boom, it creates the project for me. So, what you see on your screen right now is, is virtually, it's the same thing as what you see on page 54 of the book. Okay, this is our form. This whole thing is referred to as the designer window. There's our solution explorer. There's our properties window. You'll notice that there are different settings in here. We'll go over some of that stuff, and some of these we've already looked at. All right. And there's our toolbox. Okay, again, I can use the push pin on it. There's our toolbox. There's even other things that we can put in here other than a toolbox. All right. Over here you see what are referred to as sizing handles, and you notice if I put the mouse over any of them, I can either pull down, so I can make it higher, change its vertical, I can pull, move over here and change its horizontal, or its width, or I can go down here and choose them, play change them both at once. If I do that and I want it to revert back to where it was before, I can do a control Z, but I could, some most of the stuff here you can do a control Z, but it really matters. If I hold this, there you go. See that? So I can go back and forth between those two. All right, so that's the original size. Now, again, I just showed you how I can move that. But I can also come over here. Now it's set to 300, 300. Notice if I make it, for example, 400, oops, 400, 200. And as soon as I hit Enter, watch how the dimensions change. Okay? So I can also go in, in here in my Properties window and change it. Now if I want it back again, it's 300. Oops, 300, 300, and it's back to the size it was before. Now, hopefully you remember this, because we've talked about it in a previous class, that I made my Solution Explorer very small and my Properties window very big. When I come up here, this is the name. That's not this name here. This name where it says name, okay, that's the name that you use in code. So notice if I've got Form 1 here. If I type in Form Demo, I'm going to show you something. I didn't even show the class the other day, so I just changed the name to Form Demo. Nothing changes on here. But notice if I come in here and I view my code. All right. Now, if I come through here, and if I wanted to do this, don't ask me why I would do what I'm about to show you, but the point is I could do it. Okay. So I'm going to come up over here, and I'm going to click in my events for my form. Notice it changed its name to Form Demo. I'm going to click the events, and I'm going to go up and drag up all the way to the activate 
looked at that a little bit earlier. So I'm going to double click on it to bring up that code. And I'm going to say now, watch when I say this, form one, I'm sorry, form demo dot. Now the IntelliSense clicks, it clicks in. It knows there's something I want to do here. So I'm going to say dot text equals my first demo form. Okay, so I put that in there, semicolon at the end. point is you saw that it worked. So literally I could set this up with the code. How about let's see, let's ask this. Dot add color. Equals little I don't know. All I'm trying to show you, and I'm not doing a very good job. <clears throat> but what I'm trying to show you, okay, in fact, let, let's, let's pick up one right here. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to drag a button onto the form. Remember the first thing we always do is we change the name. So instead of calling it button 1, I'm going to call it button X like we've done that before. All right, and, I'm, and now, again, that it didn't change, but I changed the name here. So if I double click on it, it'll be button X now. So if I come down now to the text, that's what's actually shown here. I can call, I can right here exit and boom, it changes. Now if I double click on it, I can come in here. Now hopefully this will work, but we'll see. Let's see, button exit dot back color. So I'm trying to set this, I'm gonna see if it works or not, equals Sensor sets the background color of the control. I don't know if it accepts constants like red or not, so it doesn't. So take RGB. Give it a 255.0. See if it takes this. I don't know if it'll like this either. It's not that. I'm trying to figure out how to change the color. What I want to do right equivalent of this, but I want to do it in code, okay? And that is to come over here, change the color of this button, come over here and find its back color, click custom, and make it red. That's what I want to do, but I want to do it in code. All right? And let's, so let's go back to our friend here. How to change the color sharp to change a button's background color. Breaking off, this isn't exactly the same lecture I gave the class, but it's it's very close. So Col it's color dot. Okay. Alright, so that I was close at least. So let's make this back into the color that it was before. Okay, so we'll just we'll make it it was about that color. Okay. Alright, so now I'm gonna come back in here write the code, and I want to change that to back color equals color dot red. All right, so I've changed it in code. Now, you say uh, when I run this, you're going to say it didn't change. Give me a second. So we'll run it, and you'll notice that when we run it, it's still that color, but when I click it, now it changed. So all the, the point I'm trying to get across to you, not very well, but the point I'm trying to get across to you is most every single most every single attribute that you change in here you can that you change in here in the properties window and virtually everything that's in the properties window you can change it either there or you can change it in code okay all right so i did the sizing handles we've talked a little bit about the properties window already we've talked about some of the properties that are in Again, there was that text property. You've already seen this, but if I wanted to 
change that. I'll come down here to text. Oops, now click on the form. And I'll type in my first demo form. Now I didn't hit enter yet, but as soon as I do, watch what happens where the mouse is resting. That are changed. Right? Again, what I like about the language is by and large it's a very intuitive language. Adding controls, I've shown you this before. I'm going to show it to you again. Let's add three different, we'll add three more buttons, and I'll show you three ways of doing it. The first way, and some people like this way, is to just take your mouse, put it on button there, and double click. Boom, it creates a brand new button. Right? The second way is to click, hold down on the left mouse button, and drag over here. Here you get more control. When you double click on it, it goes in the upper left corner. But when you drag and drop it, it goes wherever you want it to go. So that's two ways. A third way is to take an existing control like this, do a control C, or however you do a copy, and then do a control V. So that's three different ways of creating a, a, a control. Either taking the control and dragging it out, or double clicking on it, or if you want to make a copy of one, control C, control V. Okay? Hopefully that all sense. Again, it's in your book. Also. Moving and resizing controls. Well, the button one you've already seen. So in other words, if I come back here, this says exit, and I want to change it from exit to exit program. You say, well, that didn't work. There it did. How about if I want to make it exit the program? And I hit enter. It's like, where is it? Well, it's down here, but it's not wide enough, so I can either make it wider to show it, or I can make it taller to show it, and either one of those will work. Now, uh, an interesting thing here is the label, because notice when I put a label here, I'm going to change the color right away just because it's kind of hard to see. And last time I did this, I made it like that real bright, this color, so this time let's make it turquoise. All right. Notice I can't, I can move it around, but I can't change its size. Until I go up to this property here that says Auto Ellipsis, and it says True, but if I double click on it, or if I click on it and click the down arrow and choose it to take it to false, now I can change the size and make it as wide, or as narrow, as tall, or as short as I want it to be. All right, so that's the Auto Ellipsis process. Notice with the button, okay, the Auto Ellipsis is automatically set to false. Some more stuff about button controls, you can read that on the bottom of page 59 of your book, page 60, but most of what we've talked about already. They talked about changing a control's name. Again, I can't tell you this too many times. You add the control, you come in, and you change the name of the control, and then if you had to have to add code to it, then you add the code. Rules for naming controls are shown here in the middle of page 61 in your book. They're pretty simple. There's three of them. The first character has to be a letter, upper or lowercase, or an underscore. I recommend it always being a letter. After the first character, you can use upper and lowercase letters. You can use the digits 0 through 9 or underscores. All right, and you can't have spaces in your name. So here's some legal and illegal identifiers shown in table 2-1 down towards the bottom part of page 61. Okay. All right. What they show next in here is a real simple program that just puts a button on it. When you click it, it brings up a message box that says, Hello World. So first I'm going to do it their way, and then I will uh, fix it up, so to speak, a little bit. Okay, so let's start with a clean slate. So I'm going to get rid of all that, go to my code, make sure I have nothing in there. So I don't want that exit right now. So that's gone too. Alright, so I'm starting with a clean slate. So, I'm going to do what they show in the book first, which is silly, but it, it's fine. So let's change the background color of the form just so we can see it. And it's not gray. Alright, we'll make it another orange there. Okay, so I'm going to put a button on there. Notice the button automatically becomes the same color as the form. So I'll change that as well. And we want to call this display message. So I'm going to change the name 
first of all, to button display message. And again, you know that that's its name and code. Right? If I want to change the text of the button to here to display message, notice I've got a blank space in here. Hopefully you can see that. Display space message. If I try to put a blank space up here, so if I try to say button space display space message and hit enter, I get an error message because that's not valid. To go to the details, it says that identifier is not valid. I say OK, it reverts back to what it was. Right? Now, it doesn't show display message again until I either go down or make it wider. In the book, they show it taller, so we'll keep it like that. Right? Now, I've changed the name, so I can double click on it. Again, all they want us to do here for their first iteration of this program is to say message box dot show and they want you to say it here hello world right that's the whole program that's their whole program that they have you build first so I'm going to save this run the program click and there's my hello world okay hopefully that's pretty obvious so that's what they show in tutorial 21 on pages 63 64 65 and 66 well let's jazz it up, so to speak, a little bit. All right, so first we'll stop the run, go back to here, and instead of having uh, the message come in a message box, let's add a couple more buttons. To make sure they're the same size, I'll do Control-C, Control-V, Control-V. You notice it's got the same text, but it, does, it won't have the same name. All right, so I'm going to come in here, and this one is my button display message, so that's the original one. And this one I'm going to call button clear. Notice that even though it says display message, its name is button one. So if I change it to button clear, go down to here, change the text to clear. Over here, this will be button exit. And the text will also be exit. set the auto ellipsis, I'm sorry, the auto size property to false, right? And then we'll come in with a text box. Put that in there. Right? Now I want the label will be called label message. Right? And the text will be message. And notice that it's by default it's left justified Right under text, there's a thing said that says text align. If I click there, and I click the down arrow, now I, I want it. So that's upper left, upper center, upper right, and middle, and lower, left, right, and center. I'm going to put it right straight up. And hopefully you can see it. If, if I went too fast and you didn't see it, I just went from top left. this to say hello world is probably wide enough, but I'll make it wider anyway just to be sure. And this was called label message, so I'll have this one be called text box message. Most of the time when you write a program, you won't have your text box, you won't have any code in it at all. Alright? Alright. We've got everything in place here, so let's go and double click on the display message. Now we don't want the message box. Alright? But instead, we want text box message dot text to be equal to hello world. Okay, so let's save that. And you'll notice that when we run it, there's nothing in there, and we say display, there it is. Okay, so I can come in here now too, just so you know, and I can say, you know what, that would have been nicer, I guess, if it would have been a little bit, uh, the font would have been a little look at so I can click on it I can go down and find font click on it I get the ellipsis boom I can change it so let's make it 14 point and bold all right and in fact I can even change the type in here if I want to to area okay no 
they seem to have just got a little bigger. If I run the program again, a little easier to see, right? There's ways to even center it in here. And I, I'm not, I don't care about that stuff right now. Okay. Okay. The next thing I want to do is I want I want to be able when I click this, I want what's in there to clear. Okay. So now I'm going to say text box message dot text equals double quote double quote, which is the empty string. Okay. So I can then save all, run the program. Display it, clear it. Okay. So the only thing that's left here is the exit. So if I double click on there, the easiest way, but it's the most abrupt way, is to do a this dot close. And if I do that, technically the, the app is done now. Display, clear, exit. But that was a little bit abrupt, as I said. So if you remember, and I put this out there, so if you didn't see this before, if you weren't here at the beginning of the semester for whatever, I put some code out there in just a text file at the beginning of the semester. change that exit button code to this. Let me run the program, and I'll leave this stuff up there. We can kind of go over it. All right, so there's, here's the program. <coughs> so now, display, clear, and exit. Now it asks us if we want to close the form. If we say yes, it stops. If we say no, we stay there. But I just want to show you from here, <coughs> Constant string caption close form now. So what is that close form now? Well, that close form now is this. That message want to close the form is this. So when you do a message box dot show, you put the message first, then you put the title or caption of it, then you put any buttons that you want it to have, then you put any icons you want it to have. So notice if I go through this and I change this to instead of want to close the form, I can say exit program now and let's just say exit okay and we'll change it from yes no to okay and we'll change the message box from a question to information so you can see the changes that I says exit now and then it says exit program now and we have just an okay button over there and it changed to an information icon okay I'm gonna go back and re revert back to what it was before so through this with you now. I already showed you how to change that. And I will save this out there. Right? I've already got a copy of it out there. I did some things and I haven't done other things with you guys, but just so everybody knows that. So starting on page 67, we'll talk about how to the intro to code. Right? Very important concept here in the middle of page 67. I probably should have spent more time on it yesterday with but it says that there are two files, a program CS and a form CS. What do I mean? Right, if we go down to Windows Explorer, Solution Explorer, a little bit bigger. There's the program CS and there's the form CS. Well, those are the two files that they're talking about. This, these files that are in here, okay, the program CS contains the application startup code which executes when the application runs. It's important that you do not modify the contents of this file. 
it can make your program literally not work. The form one, or whatever you call your form.cs file, contains the code associated with the form. That's the stuff that we've been uh, working with so far. And it says it already contains the code generated by Visual Studio. So, if you want to know, it says if you, if you want to if you want to see that stuff. Okay, I, I've already shown you this, but if I go to here, if I'm in design mode and I want to go to code mode, I can either double click on any of the components or I can right mouse click here and choose view code. Either one of those will work. And what I should do. tools menu and in the environment select fonts and colors all right and let's bump this up to about 14 font much easier to see stuff that gets built into, so to speak. So when you bring up a brand new project, what comes up on your screen? So in other words, all this stuff that's at the top. You can read what's in the book here on page 69, and it's good stuff. It says here that these are namespaces. This is information that C Sharp brings into your program that you're able to use. It's, very, it's, it's synonymous. It's not identical, but it's very similar to using import statements in uh, Java. Okay? It takes your project and it puts the whole thing into a namespace. So there's the beginning of the namespace. There's the end of the namespace. Okay? A namespace is basically a container that holds your classes. You can have multiple classes in there. So there to get into this right now, but it talks about partial class right there. And with a with a partial class is literally that. Okay, I don't want to get into it like I said anymore. It'll get very confusing really fast. Here's the form demo that we created. Right, and there's all the code that we put in. Again, if you want more than I just gave you, you probably do or should. You can read pages 69 and 70. They talk about message boxes if we move up all the way to page 73, but guess what? I already did with you. I gave you as much as what's in the book and maybe even a little more. I don't know. <coughs> if you jump up to page 76 in the book, which is what I'm getting to right now, they mention in here when you create a button, all right, and it says in here first button, second button. Later on in the semester, we'll talk about sender and event arcs, just to give you a little prelude, so to speak. Sender is basically what caused the button to be pressed, okay, and event args isn't used most of the time, but if I was writing a game, for example, and I had to have my mouse coordinates to know exactly where it was on the screen. I could pass those in as event arcs. All right. So the next project they have in here on the next couple pages, they again go back to their hello world. And all they do is they add a single line of code that says message box, hello world. I've already gone through this with you. And I wrote it really in a more robust way, I think, than what they had in the book. <coughs> Labels, I've 
I've shown you how to change the size of a label. The uh, I'm looking up the name of it. I showed you how to change it with the auto auto size property. All right. So we looked at that already. We've looked at how to change the font. I showed you that. It's nothing new in there. If you want, you can go and take a look at it yourselves. For the border style, if I wanted to do that. I can do it for the label. You'll notice if I go to border style, there's no border on it now. If I go down to fixed single border, all right, there's now a black border around it. Sometimes people like to do that for effect or whatever. Now I can move this a little closer if I want to, so I can make it a little bigger, so it's exactly the same size or try to make it the same size, etc. I can even take it and cut down the size of this now, however I want to do it. I could grab this, bring it down here. In fact, I could take this here, move this stuff up, make this smaller now. So you can see I've got a lot of control here. And I think I showed you this last time. But again, if I hold down on my left mouse button and draw that invisible lasso right here, now where they're all highlighted, I can also go up to the locked property and either double click it or click the down arrow and choose true. And now none of these can be moved. If I try to, I get the little lock instead. Okay, the program will still work the same. Also, a couple more things. Notice if I click on here, I can come up and I can set something that's called accept button. I have to click on the form first, not on a button. So if I click accept button and I click the down arrow, let me move this up a little bit so you can hopefully see it. my form and I want to come up here to my accept button. And yep, there it is. If I click there and click the down arrow, I'm going to choose display message. And for the cancel button, I'm going to do the same thing, but now I'm going to choose button exit. No, we'll use button exit. Now notice and one more thing I'm going to do. Oh, that, that'll be fine. Save. <coughs> you notice it still works. It will work in just a matter of seconds. Display message, clear, exit, they all still work. But now, if I hit enter, it does X, I guess I put exit with it. And if I hit escape, it clears. So let me go back and change that because I put the wrong thing in here for the accept button. Notice where this shows on the screen. I don't like it right there. So again, I'm going to go back and in here, <coughs> okay, I'm going to go down and find another property that's right down near the bottom in my form, right near the bottom, that's called window, it's called start position. Right now, the start position is set to Windows default location. I want to make it center screen. Nothing looks different on here, and nothing will look different until I run it. Notice now it runs right in the middle. Escape, boom, it clears. Now, for some reason, now I hit enter and that worked. So enter, escape, enter, escape. Okay, let's exit. Alright, I'm just running through a few of the things that they show that they showed in the book. I'm taping, but that's fine. You can feel free to, that's fine. I'm not worried about that. I'm just saying, hopefully you don't have to print out too much, or if, if you do, it's not going to be real loud. That's fine. Again, there's alignment properties. I've shown you that already here on page 84, so I'm not going to run through the same stuff I've already gone over with you. Again, this can be done either, boom, 
properties window as I showed you or you can do it in cold there's those same settings that we looked at before all right next they've got a language translator program here so the I the idea is you've got a label here, another label down here, and three buttons. If you click this button, it says good morning in Italian. If you click that button, it says good morning in Spanish. That button, it says good morning here in German. The point is, this label right here is called translation label, and you'll notice that the code for it, all you're doing is you're changing the text property depending upon the button that you're clicking. Okay, you should be able to really write this one now without any kind of problem. All right, the IntelliSense next is on page 91. We talked about this already. I'll just go ahead and kind of say it. So if I come through here, and you've already seen it, but I'm going to remove it. I'm going to uh, take one of the lines that's in here and reset it. So I'm going to comment this out for right now. So now if I say text box message, the system knows that's what I'm working with. So I can double click that, or I can hit my space bar, right? or I can hit the tab key. The, the advantage of hitting the tab key is I stay here. If I hit the space bar, it moves me off. If I hit the period, it brings up more IntelliSense. And again, I can now double click on text equals, but the point is it's the same line that we I was going to put in the same line as here. And what you see now is you've seen evidence of the IntelliSense kicking in. If you need more, pages 91 and 92. All right. The next thing that's discussed in here is um, picture box controls. And we've looked at these already, but I'm going to I'm going to go show them to you again anyway. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the form here itself. Just for a second, I'm going to throw a picture box in again. We looked at this for our heads and tails program that we did before, but I'm going to do it again. So there's a picture box. All right, I'm going to do it a little differently this time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go out to the web. Click on that, I should say. Uh, I'll go in here into Google. zoom, there it is. Notice as I make this bigger, it stretches accordingly. Okay, and if I save this and run the program, there's my image.
sense. Take the picture box control with you, which is pages 92, 93, 94, and 95. You can, if you want to, take an image of any clickable. In this example, they show here in the book on page 96, a picture of a cat, and if you click it, the message box comes up that says me. Page 97, they've got this flags application in here. And not a whole heck of a lot to it, but the idea is you've got three picture boxes with three different flags on them. And you've got a label down here. If you click on this picture box, it says France in the label. If you click on this picture box, I'm sorry, this one I guess is Finland. This one is France, and that one is Germany. So it says the appropriate Again, you'll notice when you look in here and you look at the code, it's picturebox.click, and it fills the label up accordingly. And they've got a run. So here, there it starts out with nothing in there. You click here, it says Finland. You click here, it says France. You click here, it says Germany. Okay, fine. We've already looked at the visible property. The visible property is an example of a Boolean property, meaning that it's true-false. You can modify it in code, and you can modify it in the properties window. Right next, there is a card flip application. So if you click here, it shows the back of the card. If you click here, it shows the front of the card. Very, very similar to the coin flip thing that we did, but it's just done with a card instead. And you'll notice the code looks very similar to the code that we wrote. True, false, false, and true that we did in class. couple more things and then we're done with this chapter. Starting on the bottom of page 104, they talk about comments, blank lines, and indentation, just so you see this. If I come back to my program here again, right, and so I'm going to grab one of these and I'm just going to check it. So if I come back, let's say to the exit routine here and review the code. line here that says this close. First of all, you notice that's a comment. So single line comment is slash slash. Multi-line comment starts with slash star, and it ends with star slash, so multi-line. There's a multi-line comment. Right? And I just want to quickly show you indentation. So if I wanted to, to put something here, so if I wanted to say, for example, caption, equals double quote double quote that's all fine but notice what happens if I if I type this in that was a funny example but I just want you to see this as a constant that's what I'll do so let, let's say that I come in here and I now want result to be equal to nothing what I want to get to is notice when I did that hopefully you notice it moved there's a lot of built-in formatting in here to try to line things up for you and that's really all I wanted to say about Dealing with syntax errors on the bottom of 107 and going on to 108, this is what I'd shown you before. That is, if I click here, now I purposely have made an error. So if I run the program, I get an error message that says, the build errors, would you like to continue? If I say no, it shows me my error area down here. If I double click on it, it shows me the line in question or where it perceives to be the, the error to be. It says, hey, you want to put a semicolon? example that I've been working with. And I will put that out there also. So this was the Hello World program.
next is Tools menu, import, export settings. Tools, import, export settings, reset all settings, next. Store my settings in this directory, I think that's okay. I think that list is okay. Just reset it whenever I want to make changes. Finish. Close, that reset these, that's good. That's what settings. So the one I want to do is change my default location, which is tools, options, projects, and solutions general. So tools, options, projects, and solutions general, which is here. So my projects location, see how it's been reset. I don't want that. I want that to be D colon users, J stat. when I start a new project and I should oops, new file new project and there it is on my desktop alright so everything has been reset should be fine and I'm going to come back and do some Java work